Hey everybody and welcome back. Today I want to try to answer a few common questions that I've seen not only in the recruiting space uh, but just having gone to school for my MBA as well uh, and trying to justify whether or not I think it was worth it. So common questions that I've seen are really is an MBA worth it? How much does it cost? Things about you know how or where would I even go about beginning? What kind of degree do I need to begin an MBA program and what MBA program is right for me. So I do want to let you know that the research is going to vary based on your sources. I'm going to show everything as I'm actually sifting through this information, try to let you know what my experiences were, whether or not I think it's worth it, and really just try to help you find a program that may be a good fit for you. So a little background information. I, I do think that a lot of these statistics are often skewed by top earners in the industry. So I'll try to find uh, some information and kind of help you to understand what made me go for my MBA. To get started, an MBA stands for Master's in Business Administration. You often do not need any kind of business-related bachelor's or even associate's degree to go into an MBA program. Often they will require some form of a four-year degree, and most schools will have a minimum GPA requirement to enter. So that will really depend on the school. And again, you may potentially need to take uh, additional classes if you have not completed a bachelor's in business administration or something similar. I myself went for a bachelor's in sociology. I took one additional course, which is more like a general business overview. But if your uh, GPA is high enough, typically you can get into the school, take one to two additional classes, and then just begin straight on that MBA track. Most MBAs right now are taking between one and a half to two years. So going over the pay first, then we will try to kind of transition more into uh, learning about different programs and really helping you to find or better understand what you'll learn during an MBA. And then just lastly, touch on what I've seen in the industry. Uh, again, I work as a recruiter in IT and finance, so kind of give you a little bit of background on what I've seen with MBA grads in the industry. So starting off on uh, finder.com, one of many websites displaying average salaries, you'll see as we scroll up towards the top, the top schools with highest starting salaries, again, often very skewed. But again, with some of these top tier schools, these numbers could be uh, somewhat accurate, just depending on who they're polling and when. But we're seeing salaries at the low end of 168000 upwards of 181000 annually. And then if you scroll just past that, you'll see average starting salary and signing bonus uh, for just really the highest ROI for students or return on investment. So you're seeing some of, again, these top tier schools, uh, and they're listing pretty much everything above even the low to mid six figure range. So 125 to 157,000. Now, one figure that I thought was a little bit more accurate, uh, especially with individuals wondering whether or not an MBA would be worth it, the average MBA student, which we'll cover shortly, does not have much work experience, especially experience that would be related to really the industry they may be looking to go into. But this figure here, you can see that average salary for MBA graduates by industry, and you'll see it goes from government on the very bottom at the upper end of 74000 to top end on consulting and the 140000 range. I've seen a lot of individuals in the consulting space that are retired. They were really good at what they did and went into this, again, as more of like a retirement type of position. But they do have individuals that work in consulting in varying capacities that are really in the middle of their career or even beginning stages as well. So that one is a little bit more tough, in my opinion, to kind of break down. But you'll see individuals in financial services, and these could be investment bankers, relationship bankers, they could be advisors that are really good on the sales end, and they could be individuals working in various middle office, front office capacities. So really, it depends. They have some people that can get into these entry-level roles that just have that desire and that ability to sell, and then they have individuals that get the right portfolios, give the right investment advice, and really can work in varying capacities up through management and beyond. In the technology field, I have seen quite a few MBA grads, and they are usually, at least the ones I've worked with, that are 
really some of the top earners, at least in some of the regions, uh, in various regions, I should say. But they have MBA grads that will be making upwards of 175. I've seen them up to 400 plus thousand a year. And these individuals are incredibly good at what they do. They often have multiple other degrees as well, varying certifications and years and years of industry experience. So again, those could be individuals that can skew those figures upward. But towards the middle range, um, MBA grads in the technology field, you're not going to graduate with your MBA and a couple years of experience and jump straight into 120K salary. It's possible, but more than likely you're going to be working your way up. So I would recommend if that's the route you plan on going, then looking to some other, um, really just some other some certifications or licenses to help you kind of build that rapport, build that resume and that general knowledge. I won't go through all of these, but again, a lot of these positions are very, or they can vary. So looking at retail, you could have store managers, and district managers at some of the higher end retail chains that are paid very, very well, but you could also be working in corporate offices in various capacities. So there really is no way to narrow down exactly what this breakdown looks like, but I think that it's somewhat accurate when you're considering individuals that go in with an MBA that start off maybe making 40, 50 to 60,000 annually. And then you have some of those that may go in much higher or work their way into positions where they can be making well above the six figure or well in the six figure range. So moving on to uh, using US News, they have a couple of different articles. And this again, I think is just interesting to give you a little bit of an understanding about the work experience behind MBAs and why it can be difficult to gauge starting salaries and really what their salaries may be later on in their careers. But starting off, we'll see work experience for MBA students. You'll see 89.6 of full-time new entrants have work experience of about 4.3 years. You'll see 89% of part-time have work experience around 6.4 years, and then 97.7% have work experience around 13.3 years, and that's of executive degree new entrants. So essentially, and at least what I've seen, is typically part-time students are working while going to school, and although that may be the case with full-time students, these part-time students often go to get this degree to advance from where they are. I've seen individuals who their boss may need to justify a pay raise because they really want to keep them or to move them into another position. And typically pursuing this, uh, this education will help them. But it could be to get into another field where that is one of the few base requirements, which I've seen in multiple spaces, even if you have the right experience or you have more than enough experience, sometimes the education piece is literally one thing that a company has as what we call a hard requirement, and they refuse to hire anyone without that education piece. It is not often, and often, especially at least I've seen in the tech industry or in IT, you will have companies that if you don't have the certification or the degree, then you can have the experience that will override it. Bearing in mind, there are some uh, really some oddballs or odd ones out. Like for example, if you wanted to get into government work, the Security Plus is a certification that will often be required for a lot of high-end IT work. So there are a lot of caveats here. So it's really hard to say that there's a one size fits all. So if you're interested, US News does have a list of best online graduate and business programs. I'm not really sure how they rank these. So I won't focus too much on this. A lot of these rating systems can be subjective and biased in so many ways. But just so you're aware, that article is there. And you'll see the bestschools.org has a very, very similar list. And you can go through and see their graduation rates, the school types, percentage receiving loans. If you're looking to go for your own MBA, I think a lot of this information is really irrelevant. Whether or not you go for your student loan really has nothing to do with how many people have student loans. Graduation rate, really all that's going to do is deter you from going or make you think that it is going to be an easy degree and then potentially not go into it, taking it as seriously as you could. So I would highly recommend staying away from 
a lot of those numbers because again if you plan on going in putting your all into it and you know that you can make it out whether or not other people make it out really has no bearing on what you do essentially so i decided to pick two going from john hopkins which was the top on bestschools.org and go over their program and then uh, liberty university which is where i completed my mba um, so it's something completely different, but I'll let you know the experience that I had and then try to kind of compare what you're going to be looking at between the two schools so that you can judge for whatever program and better understand what other programs are out there and kind of how to evaluate them. So looking at John Hopkins, you do see their program features and they list their analytics, leadership, and innovation, and really just all these different areas in the MBA program that you can pursue. So this is going to be two years. It is a 54 credit hour program, which seems to be honestly towards the upper end as far as the number of credit hours needed to obtain the degree. And tuition cost is gonna be pretty high, but considering a lot of websites rank this as a top tier university for their MBA program, that would be to be expected. So you'd be looking at about 62,000 a year. And for two years, you'd be looking close to 120, 124,000 for the really the entire degree program. They list a little bit of information on their curriculum, their foundation week, and you can actually view student handbook and course catalog. And they have various uh, pathways that you can choose. And uh, one thing I've seen in a lot of these MBA programs is often they will have a variety of different concentrations. So maybe you wanna go into the accounting space or if you wanna go into healthcare, you can get an MBA general, which is basically your base MBA degree, or you could choose a concentration, which is typically the full general degree, along with anywhere from three to really seven plus classes in other areas focused on accounting, healthcare, or whatever space you choose. Looking to the sample syllabi, you can actually scroll through and choose from really any of these different classes and learn what the classes will entail. Typically, they won't tell you everything you need to know, but it'll have a general description, maybe an overview of what some of the past assignments look like and things of that nature. Moving to Liberty University, who I personally think that the website just makes it a little bit easier to understand uh, as far as what you can expect. Uh, so I personally was looking for a degree program uh, that had a religious element to it. And with Liberty, you have a standard MBA program that I wouldn't necessarily say is secular. However, it adds the religious view on top of it as opposed to making everything from the frame of a of a like a religious perspective the idea being you get the same mba knowledge and then they have a separate piece for uh, that religious element so you may have your core program that other schools would have and then you'll have additional papers to do kind of implementing those topics from a religious perspective that way you're still getting the same base knowledge offered by other universities so here, you will have a 36 credit hour MBA general. However, they offer multiple other concentrations that are varying up to 50 plus credit hours. This is a 1.5 year average track. I finished mine in two years because I went part time for a year. And you can transfer 50% of your credits. It tells you that it is fully accredited. And then you'll see different benefits listed as you scroll through, as well as featured courses. And then they also list the other MBA tracks that you could look into, as well as other master's programs. And one thing I liked about Liberty's website, it was very, very easy. Uh, it was a little bit more difficult to find on John Hopkins, but Liberty, you can see the MBA general, the classes that you would need to take. So this is a sample course completion plan, meaning if you take all of these classes, assuming everything goes as planned and nothing changes, you would essentially complete your MBA. And you can actually find the sample syllabus for all of these classes on their website just to see what kind of content you would be learning. So trying to wrap everything up and tie it all together. When you're finding a program that makes sense for you, it really makes really good sense to evaluate what exactly you're looking for. I think, or I ask people to think, where do you wanna be? And try to work yourself backwards to figure out 
what you're going to do if it will get you where you want to go. I've seen people graduating with MBAs literally go into so many different fields. I can't tell you that it's going to guarantee you entry really into any industry. I can tell you that experience is huge and really how you hit the ground running is what makes the biggest uh, the advantage for you. So when you're going through an MBA program, it really is the jack of all trades of business. You'll learn a little bit about accounting functions, the financial landscape in the US, you'll learn about global, really global economics, macro and microeconomics. But in my opinion, from a standard MBA program, you aren't gonna dive so much into any of those fields specifically. That's what the concentrations are for. So the MBA often is your base knowledge and whatever career path you go into really builds on that and creates the value for you going forward. So you could go get your MBA and go into an accounting space without an MBA concentration in accounting and then work forward from there, but there may be a little bit more of a learning curve. So it's really just up to you and what you think is best. My personal recommendation would be if you want to go for a degree like this, your average cost is going to be between 20,000 at the lower end to upwards of 60 to 120,000 at the higher end. So finding a program that is fully accredited is going to be big. And then looking around, uh, maybe even calling recruiting agencies or companies in your area to see what if any schools are preferred. If they're a company that wants a degree from a top tier school or just what the preferences are. But often later on in your career, I've had people that actually just stopped leaving the school on their resume because they figured it was 10, 15, 20 years ago and wasn't relevant. So I really do think that the MBA, what it comes into play in is the first 10 years, it really does qualify you for a lot of opportunities that may not have been a possibility otherwise. But after you pass that 10, 15, 20 year mark, it really just becomes something that solidifies your experience and helps to really just build your resume, but it's not really as much of a requirement. So I think you get the most out of your, the most value out of this degree earlier on. But again, results vary by the individual. It depends on how well you interview, what experience you have, what skills you have. The degree is not by any means a requirement to make as much as these people have made. And as we have seen by many people in various industries, you can become very, very successful and really become some of the richest individuals in the world without a degree at all. So it, again, if you are interested, I would highly recommend putting it into consideration, but I would also recommend looking around online, calling into hiring managers who hire for positions that you may be interested in working and see if that is even a requirement. Often people will take the time to answer questions like that, especially for you know either prospective employees or really just anyone that is interested. As long as you try to keep the questions quick and concise, ask around, see what individuals think would be a good fit, and then that would help you to kind of steer yourself a little bit more. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment box below. Please do not forget to like and subscribe and check out my channel for other videos.